I'm Crazy Cephalopoda. I'm an aquatic scientist who sometimes plays video games, and recently I've been playing the game Subnautica quite a lot. I decided I wanted to do a little bit of a mini-series where I look at some of the different organisms and ecological relationships in Subnautica and talk about them from a science perspective. A little bit of a disclaimer, um, as I said in the beginning, I study water quality and chemistry, so uh, I do look a little bit at water organisms such as like macroinvertebrates and fish, but I am not the end-all be-all knowledge on this. If you know more about the game or more about the organisms, please feel free to share. I feel like that's the great thing about science is um, whenever somebody tells you something new, you correct your way of thinking, you broaden your horizons just a little bit. Now having said that, today what I really want to do is get into crab snake biology. So we're going to talk a little bit about what the crab snake is, maybe some features that it shares in common with other aquatic organisms, and the interesting relationship that it has with the jelly shrooms. The world of Subnautica is filled with amazing and wonderful creatures, and one such that we're going to be talking about today is the crab snake. So to tell you a little bit about where the crab snake lives, it's in a place called Jelly Shroom Cave that the player encounters in the game. This cave is roughly 180 to 300 meters deep, has a temperature fluctuation of maybe like one degree, and there's no obvious day or night cycle. From the player's perspective, all the light that we see in the game comes from the bioluminescent organisms that we see who are emitting light throughout their bodies. One such thing that we see here and what the cave is actually named for is called the Jelly Shroom. It's this large mushroom-like structure that you see in the right of the picture here. Um, it's kind of interesting because it looks like a combination of a jellyfish and a mushroom, which is perhaps where the name comes from. But if we look at its structure just a little bit, we'll notice a couple interesting things. The first is that the cap is actually transparent and that's where the bioluminescent part is. It appears that perhaps this attracts fish or other microorganisms, as we do see sometimes organisms around the area. Within it, however, it is a hollow structure on the inside and that is where our friend the crab snake actually resides. So the crab snake goes in and out of this hollow hole, using it as a home, a place for nesting, and other things like that. I'm kind of curious about the nature of this relationship, and we'll talk about it more, but um, fungi and other decomposition, you know, related plants and things are known for basically breaking down dead material, doing decomposition, recycling things like nutrients. So, you know, I'm kind of curious if within the game that the crab snake is eating all these fish and things that are attracted to the light or the bioluminescence of this organism, and in turn, all those dead bodies and bits of nutrients are being used by the actual jelly shroom. Let's look at the structure of the crab snake a little bit more closely. If you read your PDA in the game, you'll see that it's described as having a long serpentine body with two fins that basically start from the neck, go all the way to the back of the organism, and connect together. This kind of gives the appearance of just having one long, continuous fin, and that's the reason that in terms of shape, it reminds me a lot of an eel. So eels have a caudal fin, which is the fin that's at the back. It's connected to two other fins on the body, and just like the crab snake, it looks like one long ribbon that wraps around the organism. Now here in just a second, we're actually going to look at how the crab snake moves in its environment. But from what we can read about it in the game, it tells us that it undulates its fin, and that by doing that, it actually emits a little bit of bioluminescence on its own, or light. Let's talk about the coloration of the crab squid for just a minute, because I kind of find it fascinating. If you look at the color scheme of the crab squid, you're going to notice that the top is this pink color, and it has this reddish-brown stripe that runs from basically the head to the tail. And then if you flip the crab squid over, you're going to notice it has a really white or maybe a light purple kind of belly. What I find interesting about this is that this is actually a type of color pattern that we call counter shading. And a lot of organisms actually have this, but most notably if you've seen aquatic type stuff, you've seen a shark. So the idea here is that by having the top this kind of dark color and the bottom a lighter color, that when organisms look at you, you actually kind of blend into your surroundings just a little bit. I wondered if this made sense for the crab snake because it is kind of an ambush type predator. So maybe blending in with it in its environment is something that it really wants. Now related to that, I was kind of thinking that that pink color seems kind of silly if your goal is to try to blend in, but two things kind of came to mind. The first is that the kind of natural light of the cave is already a purple pinkish type color because of the bioluminescence that the jelly shrooms are emitting. So maybe this is some type of almost counter illumination. There are organisms who actually bioluminesce or, or light up just a little bit, and their goal is to kind of look like their surroundings or blend in. So knowing that it does emit a little bit of bioluminescence from its fins, perhaps that's what it's trying to accomplish. My second thought is just that often organisms that live in caves or in the dark, they just don't have great eyesight. So maybe the organisms that it hunches cannot see it, and this color pattern that it has is actually all it really needs to be camouflaged into the background. In terms of other features about the crab snake, let's look at the head just a little bit. Now one thing that we cannot really discern is whether this thing has eyes or not. So it is possible that this organism is blind. 
It's not uncommon for organisms that don't have eyes to have other means of finding prey. So whether that be sensing electrical pulses within the water or being able to feel movements and vibrations, that sort of thing, that could be possible for the crab snake. Now, most notably, if you look at the crab snake, the first thing you're obviously gonna notice is the two big things that stick out of the front. So they're described as being small things in a rectangular shaped mouth with having these black tipped claws on the front. Why I think this is interesting is that it reminds me a lot of a type of polychaete, which is a marine worm called the bobbit worm. Now, if we're looking at this thing, it drives me crazy. It's terrifying. I never want to see it. It has two large mandibles on either side. And basically when it senses vibrations of fish passing by, it grabs onto them with its mandibles and draws it back in towards the mouth part. So similarly, if we look over at the crab snake, it has those two mandibles perhaps on either side and therefore it grabs onto the player or it grabs onto prey and maybe brings it back closer to the mouth parts that we see. So I find this kind of fascinating. Um, in a similar kind of way, the bobbit worm is actually an ambush predator. So it burrows down into the sediment with its body, leaving just that mouthpiece sticking up to grab its prey like you can see here. And similar to that, if we look at what happens when you get too close to a crab snake, it comes out of the jelly shroom at you, grabbing onto you with its mandibles and bringing you back towards the mouth as well. I absolutely would not want this to happen. Luckily, this never happened to me in the game, but seeing that thing lunge at you is terrifying. If you look at it though, it's in that hollow spot of the jelly shroom. So perhaps this is why it's a benefit to the crab snake to live there, is it gives it the perfect place to ambush anybody swimming overhead or by. Next, when you look at the skin of the crab snake, you'll notice these little purple lesion-like things that run from basically the head to the tail. When reading about it in the PDA, it actually suggests that these are fungal spores from the jelly shroom and that like barnacles on a whale, they attach to the side of this organism. Now, I find this kind of an interesting concept because it may tell us a little bit actually about how the jelly shrooms reproduce. Perhaps what's happening is that when a crab snake goes into that hollow part of the jelly shroom, that's where the fungal spores are kept. They latch onto the surface of that organism that entered and crab snakes are notorious for jumping between the jelly shrooms. So maybe they are actually transferring the gametes or these fungal spores to the other jelly shrooms and actually helping to reproduce. So almost acting like a pollinator in a way. The way in which most fish propel themselves through the water is by taking that caudal fin at the back and basically waggling it back and forth. And sometimes it involves flexing the side just a little bit to get that movement to happen. Now, if we look at the movement that we see here with the crab snake, it's really twisting its whole body kind of in this serpentine-like pattern. So for that reason, I say it actually exhibits the same kind of swimming that you see eels do. Looking at the picture here for just a second of how the eel is moving, it has that same body shape. You can see it's moving a large majority of its body, maybe three-fourths of the body is actually in movement. And comparing that to the crab snake, it seems very similar. So because we lack a real caudal fin or anything, the crab snake's almost having to like belly dance its way through the water as a form of locomotion. One interesting thing about crab snake behavior is that they kind of wait vertically within that jelly shroom. And when they sense something passing, they lunge out and try to grab a hold of it. And if they don't get it, they actually go back in and they wait just a little bit more. If the crab snake does not catch anything, it will sometimes actually leave the jelly shroom and basically kind of roam around its environment. Whether that's looking for the next meal, scouting out its environment, I'm unsure. This kind of movement is really slow. It looks like it's observing things. Whereas if it moves very quickly, it'll often hop into another jelly shroom. So maybe that's a type of escape behavior that it has. Now what's interesting about the fauna on this planet is that the game actually suggests that most of these organisms are what they call simultaneous hermaphrodites, which means that these organisms are born with both the male reproductive parts and the female reproductive parts. However, when it comes time for reproduction, one basically does the male work and will basically emit sperm or whatever it is that they use, and the other one does the female work and lays the egg. So most organisms on the planet do reproduce through this means. We've only ever seen eggs of young. And what ends up happening is that the female crab snake will lay the egg, I'm assuming here in the jelly shroom, and then the male crab snake will come into that hole, perhaps fertilize the egg and then leave. So maybe this explains a little bit of their behavior. If you're watching them from time to time, you see them hopping between all the different jelly shrooms. It could be for, you know, escape, but it could also be a reproductive strategy that we're seeing. Related to our discussion about reproduction, when you look into the crab snake hole from above, you'll actually sometimes see the egg at the bottom. If you look in the picture, it kind of has like a purplish color and those stripes that appear on the adult forms on the back. Now, if you're peering in there and you decide to go in and get an egg, I do warn you, be careful because the adult does sometimes come back and you definitely don't want to be in there when that happens. 
However, should you take an egg, take it back to your base and put it in an alien containment facility, takes it about one day to mature and hatch. What's interesting here is that, as you can see in this little image, when the young do hatch, they look just like a miniature form of the adult, which means that these organisms probably do what we call direct development. There's no kind of metamorphosis where they're changing parts, they're just a tinier version of the adult, so basically they just grow larger throughout their life. Now the interactions that we see throughout the game between the crab snake and the jelly shroom are actually kind of interesting. In terms of biology, when animals live either on each other, close to each other, we call that a symbiotic relationship. And there's a particular type of symbiotic relationship called mutualism, where those two organisms are actually mutually benefiting each other. And I propose that's actually the kind of relationship that we see here between these two organisms. It reminds me a lot of another particular organism, um, the sea anemone and the clownfish. So these are two species working together where the sea anemone is providing a home for the clownfish. It has stinging cells and will prevent other things from coming inside there and getting to the clownfish young. And then likewise, the clownfish is actually sometimes giving it waste. It's protecting it from predators. So the two of them are working together. If we think a little bit then about what the crab snake is doing, it's possible that the jelly shroom is providing it a home, a place to reproduce, a place to ambush other prey. And what the crab snake is actually doing is feeding this fungal thing by giving it parts of fish and maybe its waste, and also again, protecting it from, you know, maybe there's predators who would eat that type of organism. So they have this interlocking relationship where they're both benefiting and they're both getting things out of it. Well, that's all from me. Hopefully you learned something new or you thought that something was really interesting. I love sharing facts like this and thinking about what biology is like in alien planets or other games. So my hope is that I'm gonna do this for a couple more organisms. I'm gonna pick things that I think are interesting and talk about them in the same kind of way. If you enjoy, please feel free to like and subscribe, but otherwise I hope you have a great day and I'll see you next time.